Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, and as you can see there on my first um, page of my slide deck here, we're going to talk about fear as a peak experience, which is not typically the way we describe fear as being sort of uh, the height of uh, human experience, but that's the way I'm going to talk about it. Um, and let me kind of lay out my case here for um, framing it that way. Okay, so um, a little bit about me. I'm, as uh, Elaine said, I'm a practical philosopher. I, I call myself a philosophical coach, sort of a title I just made up. <laughs> it really means that I have a PhD in philosophy and I use that training as a foundation for, for counseling, um, for helping people sort of sort out their lives and asking them questions about how to live well. Um, I also am a writer and a speaker and a podcaster. I have a podcast called Think Hard. Uh, podcast and it's about bringing philosophical thinking to everyday life so you can check that out at thinkhardpodcast.com um, and so let's turn to fear I just want to say I want to acknowledge that uh, we are obviously in like totally uncharted waters here and um, a lot of us are feeling scared a lot of the time and um, I think the first thing I want to say is that is reasonable. It is reasonable to be scared. Nothing in this presentation that I'm going to give you is going to tell you to just like not be afraid because it's not that bad because it's bad. Like we don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. Uncertainty brings a lot of fear. Um, and so we're not trying to get rid of fear. But instead, the question is, how do you feel fear without letting it control you, take over you, impact your health, impact your well-being? Um, and so that's really the question that I'm interested in engaging with um, this week. Okay, so in doing that, I just want to sort of differentiate a little bit um, between the story of fear and the feeling of fear. And in my mind, there are sort of two aspects to pretty much any emotion that we feel, but similarly with fear. So there's the story, which is essentially um, your brain spinning out tales of all of the horrifying things that are happening in the past, in the present, or in the future. A lot of people are worrying about the future and, um, and what's going on out there right now. Um, so that's sort of the, all of the thinking that's happening up here in your brain. Then there's the feeling of fear. And the feeling of fear is the actual physical bodily sensation of fear. This is, it means like your throbbing pulse, your tight jaw, your numb face. My face always gets numb when I get really scared you know, tinker, fingertips tingling, whatever it is. And that can only be experienced in your body right now, only in the present moment. So I think it's important to differentiate between the thought and the actual sensation or feeling. Okay, and so the question is, why do we tell this thought or this story of fear? And the thoughts are there, they sort of serve two purposes. One, to make meaning of the situation. And this is evolutionarily um, appropriate, right? We have this uh, feeling, the sensation often comes first. We have the feeling of like, I'm not safe, something's going on. We feel the physical changes. And then we try and figure out what's going on. Where's the tiger? How do I, how do I keep myself safe? What do I need to do to protect myself? Um, and so we're trying to figure out and make meaning of the situation. There's no tiger, but there's an invisible virus and a like, falling economy. And so we're trying to figure out what is this? What does it mean for me? What do I have to do to keep myself safe? Um, and then the second reason that we tell this story of fear is to try and like avoid or solve the problem of the fear. So we can do it by distracting ourselves. Um, we rather than feel the feeling, which is really uncomfortable, we instead go to the thoughts. And we think that if we can think the right thoughts, that somehow that will make the feeling go away. If I just know what's going on enough, if I can like solve the problem of, of the pandemic or solve the problem of this feeling, then somehow the feeling will go away. The problem is that it doesn't typically work. Instead, what it does is it just like intensifies the feeling of fear, right? You have this feeling, it's uncomfortable, you don't like it, you tell yourself a scary story about what it means, like, oh my gosh, my heart is thumping. What does that mean? Does it mean that I'm having a heart attack? Oh, that would be especially bad, right? The feeling gets worse, it becomes more intense. Then you just go around the cycle again and again, and you get yourself all like worked up into a tizzy. I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been there, usually in the middle of the night when, you know, you're supposed to be asleep. The problem is that 
thinking about the feeling and trying to do that problem solving and that fact finding and like checking Twitter for the 20th time in the, in, you know, the last 10 minutes or checking the news for the latest stats. We think it's going to solve the problem, but it's like, instead it's like throwing Tinder on a fire in an effort to extinguish the fire. It's not going to work. And so the first thing to do, I think, is to stop throwing Tinder on the fire. <laughs> like to give yourself an opportunity to feel the fear, the actual sensation of fear without feeding it with these scary thoughts. So what I recommend is this. You give yourself a chance to feel that. Now, the first thing to do is to like um, give yourself a container for that. Because usually when I suggest to people that you should just like let yourself feel fear like all the way. They're like, that sounds terrible. Why would I want to do that? And so I recommend giving yourself just a little like container, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just like a little amount of time in which you are going to welcome this fear into your body, into your being and feel it all the way. So to do that, you're going to try and drop the story of fear as best you can. Let go of those that those thoughts that are telling you what this all means and really tap into the sensation of what fear actually feels like. And when you do that, you're going to feel fear all the way, like to the point where you almost become the fear. You kind of welcome it in and you say, I'm just gonna like disappear into fear and let yourself kind of go on this like fear ride, like let the fear take over. There's not even a you there to resist it. It's just fear in your body. That sounds scary, and it is, but I think that you can breathe and trust yourself to stay with the sensation, stay with the pumping heart, stay with the tingling, stay with the numbness, stay with the lightheadedness and the breathing, and breathe and trust right, that you can do it. Don't let yourself be carried away by a story that says you can't do it because it's just sensation. It's just a quickening of the pulse. And, and to bring an attitude of curiosity to this experience as much as you can, and really say, what does fear, like actual fear, actually feel like in my body? Where does it live? How do I experience it physically? And to be as curious as you can without letting yourself get pulled away about like what it means for you, what it means for the world, and blah, right? Stay present, breathe with it, and feel this fear. And often those like stories are gonna wanna come back in. It's just like the nature of human mind to try and escape this feeling and tell, tell yourself a story. So what I recommend is coming up with a kind of new story. And the new story is that when you stop resisting fear, you can actually almost see it as kind of that sensation is sort of exhilarating. It's like, it's like, you know, the reason that people go on roller coasters. It is, it's exciting. It's, it's the reason people go downhill skiing and go see scary movies and go on first dates and all the things that we do that are sort of scary. You know, I, I heard a quote once that said, fear is just excitement without the breath. And if you bring your breath to it, you can reframe fear as a kind of feeling of utter aliveness. In fact, as a peak human experience, that rush, that lightheadedness, that feeling like you're gonna sort of pass out because your body is reacting so strongly, if you can be present for it and not trying to escape to somewhere else, it is something you will remember. It is something that will make you feel alive. It will make you feel like you are a person in the world, in a body, and you are really living it. And fear is so juicy, it is so intense that it gives us that kind of like <gasps> rush. So I think that if we can reframe it, then we can learn the nature of this feeling that we've been avoiding, like the real nature of fear. We learn that we can sit with it. You learn that like really the feeling, like being afraid is just something that you can actually feel. You can do it. You start to gain a kind of confidence. Um, 
And whether that's, oh, sorry, that's my timer. Um, whether that's now or in the future, like you, you know, maybe you haven't lost your job yet and maybe you're afraid you will. When that happens, you're going to feel fear. And it's going to be the same fear that you feel now. Like the fear doesn't discriminate what the situation is. The feeling is the same. So whatever the future situation might be, you can still feel it. Um, and then my recommendation after you do this little exercise is to give yourself some warm feelings. There's a Sanskrit word that means metta, which is kindness or compassion. And that just is a reminder that you're safe um, and that you have the capacity to love and that others love you as well. And it's a way of sort of bringing, closing the container, bringing yourself some safety. So it's something that you all can do at home in 10 or 15 minutes. And um, that's my piece. <laughs>